Hello, I'm here today with composer Tom Lopez, our associate professor of technology in music and related arts, the Timara department. Tom, welcome. Thank you so much, Rafael. And we're here to talk about your new piece, Tempus Orobodos, <laughs> the piece that you created for uh, this unusual year and is actually based on, on the experience that we're going through as we put together all this series of uh, performances in our very unusual year of the pandemic. So Tom, can you tell us about your new piece? <laughs> sure, thank you. Well, first of all, I, I would say um, I, I feel a little bit like it's our piece, Rafael, because you are you have been such a central uh, character in it, both um, literally because uh, you are in the video, uh, but also um, I really appreciate your your collaboration in, in putting such an experimental piece together. So thank you for for working on it with me. Um, yes, boy, what a what a year! I think. Uh, two of the issues that I was interested in trying to address in the piece um, were constraints because of the pandemic. And so one of those was not being able to perform in front of a live audience. So we were we knew, of course, up front that it was going to be a, a videotaped piece. And then the other issue was that we were limited in the number of performers who could be on the stage at any given moment. Um, and so uh, for me, I, um, the the solution that I thought might be interesting to play with would be allowing myself the ability to have multiple video streams at the same time um, in the piece so that um, I could sort of, in a sense, double the size of the orchestra. You know, uh, even though we were constrained to recording, so the brass ensemble, for example, in one location and the string section in another location, uh, by playing footage from those uh, next to each other, I could sort of create a larger simultaneous ensemble size. Which is uh, indeed what we have done the entire year. Uh, I just want to make sure the, the audience understand that due to the restrictions of the pandemic, we were forced to move from venue to venue, uh, led one room, um, cool down or have a resting period for the air to clear and move to a different location for another rehearsal. So we were actually literally going from venue to venue to continue putting together these works. And what you did was you just captured the essence of that and put it in in a piece. Yes, yes, exactly. So what what viewers will see is that we'll follow Raphael on a journey from one location to a couple other locations and we won't actually leave your side in between. So we'll get to see the traveling between the spaces and there are some uh, musicians um, strategically located along those journeys. So even though there's quite a bit of physical movement from location to location, uh, there's uh, musicians always along the way. So yeah, there's the fantastic uh, uh, part of it, which is traveling from place to place. Yeah. Uh, but there's also the aspect of time, which is something that you uh, had as an important part of your, mm -hmm. your concept in the original yeah. piece. Well, uh, I, I, I won't go into too much detail, but maybe it's worth sharing um, a little bit more about that. Uh, ideally, there'd be a nice program note that people could you know, read on paper if they were in person for an event. But uh, yes, I want to say something about that. Um, so uh, the title, of course, Tempus Ouroboros, uh, Tempus is the Latin word for time. And uh, the Ouroboros is a mythical creature, usually depicted as a dragon or a serpent uh, eating its own tail. And so it's uh, often used to depict um, cyclical renewal, like life, death, and rebirth, and themes like that. Um, and I have a, an image of a drawing of an Ouroboros that I'll share with you. Perhaps that could be inserted into the video so people can see it. So maybe I'll just describe the, the beginning of the piece a little bit. So it begins with um, you conducting the brass section in Finney. And, um, but shortly after the piece begins, uh, the video splits into two. And so we see you conducting the brass section uh, twice, uh, the same material, but at about one minute, one of those stops and starts moving backwards in time, while the original one keeps moving forward in time. Um, so we get to see uh, a counterpoint there between the one moving backward, 
which is doing something that we often refer to in musical terms as retrograde, um, along with the, the version going forward. And of course, after about a minute, the one going backward gets to the beginning of the piece. <clears throat> and at that point, it turns around again and starts going forward. But at this moment, the video that had been moving forward all along is about two minutes into the piece. And at that moment, uh, you leave Finney and start interacting with some percussionists. So at that section of the piece, we hear the brass music again, but this time accompanied by percussion. Uh, so uh, it's this um, technique of splitting off the video and sending it in a different direction for a little while that allows me to build layers of video on top of each other. This happens a few times in the piece. The, um, the crucial one, though, is at exactly halfway through the piece. Uh, the video that uh, is moving consistently throughout from beginning to end in a forward motion splits off a copy of itself that starts going backwards. And if the timing works out just right, and it is the middle of the piece, um, there's this um, moment, of course, just as it reaches the beginning going backward, the one that's going forward is going to reach the end, right? Um, and so I think, um, well, that's, that's of course, the crux of uh, where the Arabaris theme comes in, because uh, the challenge I wanted to give myself is, uh, what if um, the beginning and the ending are the same moment? Like, what if you can approach that single moment from the future and the past simultaneously? Um, and and that, that was the, the tricky part. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it, it is a, a, an amazing concept. And of course, as you, as you said, it's, a, it's quite a challenge to put, yes. put all these el musical elements together and these visual elements together. So there's a, uh, of course, this is a piece that was created as, as you mentioned on your subtitle as a film for the orchestra. Right. And, uh, but there's also another element that I, I want to uh, mention, and is the, the use of dancers, and is the use of, of that extra aspect, you know, the use of the uh, of choreography and yeah. that Holy Handman Lopez mm -hmm. uh, for, for you. So can you tell us about that? Sure. Well, I, I suppose the, the, the notion to incorporate uh, dance came uh, early on because um, one of the things that I, I, I knew I would be doing uh, right off the bat is dispensing with this notion that the space is in some sense invisible. So for example, I'm speaking just for myself, when I go to a concert often, um, I'm so focused on the music, uh, I'll close my eyes, and in a way, I, I can try to imagine that I'm not even in a concert hall, that the space doesn't matter, that I don't need to pay attention to the music stands or, or the walls or anything else because um, it's simply an environment for me to listen to. But in this piece, there's no getting around uh, the environment because we're moving between multiple spaces uh, and all the locations in between those spaces. So that, of course, invites lots of interesting opportunities. Well, what space are you going to use? Where, Raphael, will you travel when you go from one location to another location? And what will we see while you're traveling from one place to another place? Um, and yes, I, um, I've always enjoyed collaborating with choreographers and dancers, and my wife is no exception. So when I was talking about this piece with her, she offered some really exciting ideas about what dancers might be doing um, on your travels. De definitely a, a, a fantastic addition to this. <laughs> uh, Tom, this is a phenomenal way of closing uh, a very unusual year. This goes on our last episode for this academic year of uh, the Oberlin stage left, of the Oberlin ensembles on stage left. So I think this is a perfect, perfect conclusion for the year. And I want to thank you so very much for creating this project. I hope the, the audience enjoy it. And um, I hope that you're pleased with the result of everything. <laughs> well, likewise, I, it's really been an honor, like I said, to work with you, Rafael. And I, I hope the finished version works out to our satisfaction. And it's really been an honor to be a participant on the Stage Left series this year. I think um, you and the other conductors have done a phenomenal job under these circumstances. So my, my hat off to you. Thank you, Tom.
have no win me after that. That will leave us. Stay that so. Stay so now. No as for you, feel no as sail walk. That's all now. Literally ask this out. Go look me after that. Sal that. Stay no win me after that. That time you went back, that last time to look, was the child still there? When was that? Or that time in the sand, the clouds passing over, not a sound, only your old breath and the leaves, no words to break the silence. When you opened your eyes from floor to ceiling, the whole place suddenly full of sound, what was it? Was that it? Something like that? That time you went back? <laughs> 